September 6, 2017. A flash of ultraviolet and X-ray light erupts from the sun, sending a burst of radiation toward Earth. We call it a solar flare. Flares are huge explosions on the surface of the sun, throwing light out into the solar system and absolutely baking anything in its path. These are really powerful events erupting from the sun, and we are fundamentally in the line of fire. The flare is so intense, it causes radio blackouts across the side of the Earth facing the sun. And the timing could not have been worse. The problem was, at this time, there were hurricanes in the Atlantic bearing down on the Caribbean, and there were people trying to get in there and rescue folks. Radio communication between disaster relief teams goes down for most of the day. Space weather and Earth weather combine to create chaos. It's not just an academic exercise. Your very lifestyle depends on understanding how the sun behaves. We need to be able to predict what the sun is going to do next. And in order to do that, we need to have eyes on the sun, as many eyes as we can get. Three, two, one. That's why NASA has put together an elite unit. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff and liftoff on an international mission of solar physics. A fleet of daring spacecraft. We humans have come a long way. If you go back a few thousand years, people were worshiping the sun. And today, we've built a fleet of spacecraft that monitor the sun 24 hours a day, observing it from every angle, predicting what it's going to do next. That's nuts. Leading the pack is the Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO. It keeps a telescopic eye on flares blasting out from the sun's surface. 24 hours a day, the SDO probe is on the lookout. It's constantly vigilant. It looks at the sun at a lot of different wavelengths in exquisite detail so that we can see exactly what sort of high energy events are happening on the sun. The record for the longest service goes to SOHO, our sentinel monitoring the sun and its faint outer atmosphere. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, is the old hand at studying the sun. It's been up there for 25 years, observing not just the sun itself, but the environment around it. Instead of looking directly at it, it actually blocks out most of the light so that we can see all these beautiful structures that surround the sun. And then there's the new recruit, the Parker Solar Probe, our scout going deep behind enemy lines. The Parker Solar Probe is going to give us the closest look at the sun that we have ever had in the history of humanity. We're flying so close to the sun, we're flying through the gases of its atmosphere. 29 other craft make up the fleet, each with their own role to play. This fleet of spacecraft that we have the overall mission is to observe the sun scientifically, learn about its behavior, but also, importantly, to learn about the effects that it has on Earth. Our lookout probe, the Solar Dynamics Observatory, or SDO, spots something hellish. Today's forecast for the sun is predicted to be 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit with winds of up to 600 miles per second and a pretty decent chance of rain. You don't want to be in this rainstorm because your umbrella isn't going to help you. Solar rain isn't water, it's plasma, hot plasma. Rather than a solid, liquid, or gas, the entire sun is made up of a strange fourth state of matter, plasma. Plasma is just simply gas that's very hot. So hot it's lost some of its electrons and become electrically charged. And the wonderful thing about plasma is that once it has that electric charge, you can direct it with a magnetic field. 
and the Sun has the most powerful magnetic field in the solar system. It twists and flows through the entire star. The Sun's magnetic field is incredibly complicated. There are lots of loops of magnetic lines coming out of the Sun's surface. As you go above the surface, the magnetic field begins to control where the gas can go, and you get these beautiful loops and other structures above the Sun that are just showing you where the magnetic field is. The SDO spacecraft's jaw-dropping videos of rain on the Sun show plasma flowing along huge, looping magnetic field lines that have punched through the Sun's surface. Because the surface of the Sun is a plasma, and these loops of magnetic fields are coming out of it, it draws that plasma up, which then cools and rains down as a plasma rain. Tracking these loops of magnetic field and plasma could help explain solar flares. And it could give us some warning. September 2017. Minutes before the devastating mid-hurricane radio blackout, our solar lookout spotted an explosion on the surface of the sun. Suddenly you have this tremendous flow of energy and an explosive release of it, and we call this a solar flare. This is SDO's specialty of observation. The craft tracked the magnetic loops above the sun's surface. They were highly unstable. SDO takes very detailed pictures of where the flows are. You can actually see gas flowing from one place to another. You can see the, you can see the magnetic loops. These magnetic flux loops are kind of like wires carrying electricity. When they're on their own, they're fine. But if they get too close, they can connect and short circuit. And then you get a tremendous release of energy. The Ghostbusters were really onto something. Don't cross the streams. The contact between magnetic loops released an epic explosion of high energy light. This radiation altered our planet's atmosphere. Radio waves jammed, causing blackouts at the worst possible moment. Solar flares are happening on the sun 90 million miles away. Who cares, right? Well, think of it this way. A really good solar flare could be the equivalent of oh, say, 10 million hydrogen bombs going off. How's that sound? Solar flares happen a lot, and they do affect us. They have affected us in the past, and they will again in the future. But the sun's twisting magnetic fields do more than just disrupt our communications. And when we see flares, we got to keep an eye out on those. But sometimes there's something even bigger. The sun launches huge clouds of plasma across the solar system. All of that material can come to the Earth and really mess things up here, blow out our power grid, destroy our satellites, even physically harm our astronauts in orbit. Can the solar fleet safeguard Earth? 